Okay, good evening, everyone. It is uh, November 5th, 2020. Uh, with that, uh, we will kick off our um, policy committee uh, weekly a meeting of the uh, police uh, commission. Um, I just want to thank everyone for being here. We're going to kick off in the interest of everyone's time. Uh, and I think clear on the agenda here, we have a, a rather, a rather focused and I want to thank everyone for coming together earlier this week as well with uh, the focus in our lunch space. And just like we did in the lunch space and conversation earlier, I believe on Monday, uh, we began right away with just focusing on where we left off in our previous uh, Thursday meeting. Um, where we left off was in the, uh, the data, excuse me, um, yeah, on, on the data section on recommendation three. Um, we are very close uh, to the end and we are focused in on the recommendations on strengthening the language so that it reflects our intended purpose uh, and has the needed impact and intended impact at the end. I'm going to share my screen here um, here as well. Um, and then I want to be sure that everyone can see. You should be able to see. Here, let me make sure I can. I think Ms. Gilchrist or someone told me it's best when I um, keep my screen full there. And so uh, you should be able to see my screen there with recommendation three. That's where we stopped all. We started. Yep, that is. That's exactly where we ended last time. Um, this is for data. It was previously named um, uh, differently before, but this is exactly what it was listed in our preliminary uh, recommendations. Um, the last piece that we we were under there is just open comment on this one. This one reads MMPD should support and extend full access uh, to MNCO for the review of and then it has 3 subsections here under this space here. We, we were talking here in a bit of uh, kind of depth here around the intended purpose here. This does not limit MMPD's ability or authority. Uh, to um, purchase any military grade or style weapons vehicles that they may need. What it does is allow MNCO to review um, uh, the request of this um, and the use of this uh, type of um, uh, purchase, uh, the type of uh, use of this purchase in neighborhoods and the proposals of such. Um, are there recommendations, thoughts on this? We've had a few days to think about this, uh, revisions to the language, et cetera. I, I open it up uh, here. Yes. And we take silence as uh, we have a consensus to move forward. Are we comfortable with that? I am. Thank you. We'll move forward to recommendation four. Thank you. Uh, the community events uh, being held where residents are given information as to alternatives for crisis response. And then we list uh, examples of Gideon's Army Mental Health Cooperative. Uh, in center stone, um, I do think we need to add a few pieces of uh, a few words here and there to be uh, a bit more clear about the, um, the intended um, the intent of this recommendation. Any thoughts here on what could be uh, added here? Ashley, if I may hop in, I believe that some of our recommendations were not just for MMPD, and so I think that it got folded into this. Uh, so I, I think it is a really good idea to be clear about, you know, whether or not we feel like that's maybe the health department, you know, and do you can speak to that or maybe it's another organization. Um, but yeah, I think it definitely could benefit from some clarity that we're not asking MNPD to um, take that task on, but that was one of those other agency um, recommendations. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point. So is there, to, and this is a good example of just that by Sir Lucas, is there a way that we could, um, because it's, this document is kind of sole intent and purpose to recommend that MMPD mm -hmm. um, either maybe partner with um, in another metro agency to achieve said purpose, or do we just delete it because the audience, it just doesn't reflect the audience? 
Well, to be honest with you, it depends on what uh, I think we have yet to ha have a discussion, which is about what our recommendation is going to be around mental health crisis response. I believe this was, should there be a co-response model? Um, so it actually would involve the um, MMPD. Um, so I, I think the answer to your question depends on what the outcome is of the discussion around a mental health crisis response. No, I take your point. And, I, and, and we, in our recommendation, earlier recommendation, what we've centered on is the in previous uh, categories is we said similar to, you know, we've said kind of a, a mixture of such um, in this space. So I would think that we would want to keep some type of language like this because we want it to be, um, you know, we're not saying we know exactly what it is. We recommend it that a group of experts come together to develop what that looks like. It's my memory serves me. Is that is that correct? Am I right about that? Without scrolling up, I guess. That's my understanding. Okay. Um, so could we reword this maybe? Uh, yeah. That's gonna be 2458. There we are. Sorry about the wait. Uh, sorry. I would recommend that we review this recommendation because you're right, we may need to eliminate it altogether, but until after we've had the chance to discuss the recommendation around mental health crisis response, and then at that point it may be worth just scrapping it all together. Okay. 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 Back to this. Anything else? Anyone else? I don't want to. I don't know if I was cutting anyone else off there. Any other comments or thoughts on this recommendation for? Okay. We'll move to use of force, uh, excessive force. Recommendation one uh, uh, notes that there should be a requirement for a constant use of body cameras by officers. This includes uh, video evidence. Uh, the states rather that video evidence will protect those officers acting quickly, those citizens who are not breaking the law and or will be this video evidence also will be the basis for investigating accusations of wrongful use of force. Um, any thoughts or additions to this recommendation? Madam Chair, this is Tori Johnson. Um, Sir. The require constant use of body cameras. What does that mean? Does that mean they should be running the entire shift or running consistent with the Metro policy as to when they activate them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I take it to mean the latter. Um, however, um, can that subcommittee um, speak to that? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there uh, Ashley? Yeah. Sorry. Hey, Ashley. Um, I think that was our part of our recommendation, and I think uh, Tori is really, um, that it's the the new policy that has is in effect right now uh, from my he requires them to use it any time they're answering a call. I remember some dialogue that it actually is recording constantly and will back up, I think, 10 to 15 seconds before they even tap it. Um, but I, I think Troy, he makes a good point, um, require the use of body cameras by officers. Uh, Whenever, I don't know, I think we can uh, just strike the word constant, and I think our point is made, it, if that's acceptable for everyone. Yeah, can, can I ask a question too? Um, if we strike the, the word, I guess my next question, and I, without, I'm not very, I'm not completely familiar with the, the policy, even if it's, uh, you know, just the interaction with a uh, with a resident, you know, maybe they're not answering a call, but it's just an everyday um, interaction with the with the resident. That would be my concern too. Um, if that's it, does the body camera come on during that instance as well? Um, 
because I would I would hope that was also captured. And then maybe we, we would hope that it was constant, if that makes sense. And my, my recollection of the policy, if if it's just, hey, officer, um, can you tell me where the um, barbecue uh, place is? Um, there, there's no requirement for all interaction. I think I think it's when they when they uh, arrive at any call, um, if there's any type of confrontation or whenever they have to use um, force of any kind or they're in pursuit of any kind. Um, and that's probably not exactly right, but I think I'm close. Um, mm. and, and perhaps um, Yeah, just to jump in here, Warwick, this is John. Um, I spent some time on body-worn camera policy, although it's been a little while. I think the, the policy is even broader than that. Um, it was something developed with DOJ and reviewed by the COB. Um, another word, adjective, you might, you might consider is consistent. I think that everyone's concern is that uh, what happens if camp the policy is pretty solid, at least that was DOJ and COB's take on it. But I think everyone wants to make sure it's applied consistently, that there are no gaps, that you know there aren't times when cameras are turned off. So I just want to offer that adjective for you all to consider. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the use of uh, uh, at all stages of interaction with any individuals to that effect. Um, because I, I think that's what you were speaking to. That was a good question, Ashley. You know, anytime there's interaction, that doesn't mean confrontation, uh, interaction of any kind. Um, um, I, I think require cons require the consistent use of body cameras by officers. Uh, um. Or I, I agree, this is Larry. I agree with John Button and I see Ashes making the change. Replace constant with consistent, I think takes care of most of the mm -hmm. issues we're talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think so. so okay. To, um, Mr. Robinson. Yes. No. I, I think that accomplishes what we're trying to do. Okay. Any other thoughts on recommendation one? Okay. Sure. I can't tell if I'm cutting this one. Okay. Recommendation two is to create an office in the MMPD to report directly. If, uh, if I could sorry. ask uh, who wants to go on mute, unless you're um, uh, just chiming in uh, to speak. Thanks so much. Uh, recommendation two is to create an office in MMPD to report directly to the police, uh, the chief of police. Um, on what the videos are showing, that's documenting regarding use of force and compliance by officers with MMPD policies, COB policies, and the law. Create policy regarding regular view of the videos. Uh, I'll open the floor up for a conversation or uh, discussion here. Any com comments or suggested revisions to recommendation? To Ashley, uh, the, the thing here was uh, reporting directly to the chief. You you cut out any other chain of command. Um, I think what we noticed was when the the I guess it's the the layout of of how everybody reports up the chain of command. 
And we noticed that the Office of Professional Accountability reports directly to the chief of police. Um, and the line of thinking with reporting directly to the uh, police chief would be that nothing would be lost in translation. And if there were concerns, it wouldn't go up layers of the chain and be addre uh, dire addressed directly from the chief if he wants to assign it to a deputy chief or someone, but at least he would be, or she would be, I should say, um, be made aware of any issues directly. So would, what would be your suggestion? Do you have a suggestion on how you might uh, revise? Well, I, I think recommendation two does state that an office would be created to report directly to the police chief on what the what the videos are showing, documenting regarding. Um, I, I would and concerns, you know, that the COB has is expressing. Um, I'm not legislating for any change. I'm certainly open. Um, Rachel may want to jump in here too, but I, I'm not legislating for any changes unless somebody, but I'm open to it. Ms. Davis, just to elaborate a little bit more, the main purpose uh, for our subcommittee in putting this recommendation in was like Mr. Roberts was saying to, uh, to elevate these concerns to the chief of police, whether that's building it into an already existing position that reports directly to him and maybe not creating an office, but making sure that the evidence and the documentation that's collected through the, the body cameras is reviewed and right. not just right. um, hanging out there, that it's reviewed on a regular basis, that it's used to, um, to enhance training opportunities and continued supervision and uh, all the elements that go into training and working with officers, that this mm -hmm. becomes learning and growth opportunities and uh, checks and balance. So that's that's the purpose. And if there's a better way to capture that, our committee is certainly open to that. But that that was the purpose and the intent. No, I, mean, uh, I, mean, I think it, that makes perfect sense. And I'll tell you, um, I think you're uh, you were ahead of your time when you drafted it because actually interim chief Drake announced what two weeks ago, three weeks ago, maybe time that um, he appointed someone to this role. Um, and um, and I can't remember the name and title of the person, but they're a liaison. They're serving in a liaison capacity. I don't believe it's an official office, but I think we should keep this in the structure. It certainly needs to be built out. So there is some commentary of sort. Now, what I think is missing is I don't want that. What I wouldn't want that person to do is serve as a buffer somehow to keep the COB from having direct access and communication to the chief, because I think that the executive director and the COB and the chief still need to communicate. But there should be a liaison to still keep very everyday focus on what's going on with that body camera um, uh, camera footage. And I think that's what this is getting to. Um, at least that's how I read it um, from my vantage point. So um, so I, I see that purpose. I, I wonder if anyone sees anything differently. Um, uh, if not, um, I, I'm comfortable with recommendation too, but I open the floor up uh, if anyone else sees anything else. Ashley, I, th I think uh, I agree with much of what you just said. I think the important thing here is to contribute, is, is to make sure that body cameras are an important tool the police and the COB community will learn to rely upon and use and trust. Absolutely. It is in Mr. Woods. I absolutely agree. I think we it sounds like we have consensus with we, we, we believe in recommendations. Yeah. I'm sorry, Ms. Lucas. Actually, I'm so sorry, if I may. I, I hear what Mr. Robinson and Ms. Freeman are saying, and I think that's really crucial. And I'm very glad that they addressed that. I'm just not sure that creating an office, both since we have the MNCO. And that is their purpose is um, to be oversight around use of force and compliance. 
Um, and is and two because, like you said, uh, a new person a appears person to be appears maybe an existing staff person is then designated to fill that role. If yeah. we could, um, you know, the yeah. use language to just say that. Um, you know, uh, Captain yeah, White did, or you know, whoever is in that position going forward has a direct report to the police chief. I also wanted to mention that that last sentence, I believe, speaks to uh, the very first, I believe, recommendation in racial disparities about the MNCO doing regular audits, which would include the um, videos. And I think we specified in the first recommendation that it would include the videos. So I'm not sure if there's some overlap there. I just wanted to point those two things out. So perhaps we can can we cure that by by perhaps taking out this last sentence? Yeah, that's what I was going to suggest. Yeah. No, um, Ms. Freeman, Mr. Robinson, are you all comfortable with that? So that we don't have that overlap. I, I am. I mean, I was just in trouble if they don't make the regular review. I assume they'll do that with the COB regardless of what we put in here. Right. Yep. I think they will without a doubt. I can assure you they will. I just want to, make to sure give you one other a little bit more context for your consideration. So there mm -hmm. is um, the MMPD did create a, a, a captain position to oversee the body worn camera program. Captain did. So I think you met Amanda. He did a presentation to NOAA on policy and so forth. So another option would be to uh, recommend that the captain speak regularly with uh, the chief uh, if you are concerned about, you know, the office, non-office recommendation. Just another option I wanted to highlight for you guys. I would second what John said in terms of maybe the recommendation being that the, you know, the office in charge of uh, the body cams will have, you know, have, you know, regular reports and direct reports to the chief. Okay, so we are taking this here. And then we would be adding a sentence here to um, Say that uh, how, what, what was that um, regular would be regular reports um, by the director of the of this newly created office or role, right, uh, Vice Chair Lucas? What you were saying? I just want to make sure I'm quoting you correctly. Yeah, that. Um... I, I'm not sure we we have to recommend that it's a newly created office or role. I think the, the the most important thing from my understanding is that this this responsibility lives somewhere within MNPD, and not just with MNCO, but also connects with and communicates with uh, COB MNCO. Uh, I like what uh, Mr. Button was the, the explaining about the captain and how that is part of his role now. So I, 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 from from the committee, subcommittee's perspective, I think the most important thing is that this is held somewhere within the department. Okay. Mr. Robinson, Mr. Woods, am I off there? No. I, I, I think you're right. Um, my suggestion would be that Instead of, I think we need to modify the create office language and say that um, the captain, let's see, the MNPD captain uh, assigned uh, to oversee the body camera uh, review. Report directly to the police chief because I think that's a main point. We want this captain to report directly to the police chief uh, uh, concerning what the videos are.
are showing or documenting use of force and compliance. By officers. And that the captain uh, work. Oh, I think we want to make a reference to. It's my understanding the liaison with the MNCO is the Chief Hager. Um, and so maybe we just say, and that the captain also work with the MNCO liaison collaborate. With the MNCO and other community, uh, and other interested community organizations. If that language is suitable, um, can I point out one more thing? Um, we took out the sentence about creating policy regarding the regular review of the videos. I know that is referenced, as Ms. Lucas said earlier, in our document and recommendations, but that was in relation to MNCO. So I think we need to reconsider making sure that there are policies around the constant review of the body camera videos within MNPD. And it's while it's part of the captain's um, responsibilities of just making sure that it's that's something that's embedded into the the regular review and, and policies of the of the department does that make sense it does so it, i'm just not sure it's an, i'm not sure it's a it's a duplication can i ask a question right uh miss freeman so I just want to make sure that I'm understanding what you're saying is that you would like the recommendation to include whether it's Captain Whited with the chief or, you know, this new position that we're hearing about that MNPD regularly review those. Um, and I think that is an excellent um, point. My understanding, though, I believe from um, Captain Whited, no, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm mistaken. I thought he said that they were gonna be doing that. So yeah, maybe it is a very good idea that we include that as part of our recommendation um, that they be reviewed regularly as well. So sh I think she's right that that's not a duplication. Okay, great. So, and, and how would you, um, Ms. Freeman, how would you uh, suggest, maybe you just use the same sentence or put that same sentence at the end or something different? Yeah. Uh, the the sentence that was there said create policy regarding regular review of the videos. Uh, that that still works for me if it works for everyone else. Okay. Could you say it one more time for me? Sure. Create create policy regarding regular review of the videos. I think that's pretty simple and straightforward. But um, I know there are others on this group who know more than I do around this. No, I said that works for me. Okay. Right. That's our now our, our newly minted recommendation two. Um, how does everyone uh, feel? Any thoughts, additional comments here on recommendation two? That we'll move to recommendation three. Where we speak about MMPD, we recommend the MMPD undergo a diversity assessment and subsequently create a diversity plan that will, among other things, improve diversified hiring practices, uh, including recruitment and internal promotions. Uh, any thoughts here as it relates or suggested revisions as it relates to recommendation three? Yeah, I'd like yes. to jump in here if I could. Um, yes. This is an incredibly important recommendation. 
it really is probably the primary thrust of uh, the workforce committee. Their centerpiece recommendation is, and, and recommendations are all about the need for to diversify MMPD across all levels of the organization. Um, so I would suggest that this is a recommendation which uh, they have very covered and is very much in their wheelhouse. Right. Okay. Madam Chair, that was going to be my um, my suggestion also that as important as it is, I feel strongly that it's been covered, if not by uh, other places in this committee. But I know the Workforce Committee was assigned particularly to review this. So uh, with that being said, I, I hate to strike something that's uh, that important but it's going to be covered somewhere else. And with your permission, I suggest we strike it. That's fine. Anyone feel strongly otherwise? Okay. We're, that's absolutely fine. We'll strike recommendation three of the use of force, excessive force here. Recommendation four uh, speaks through, through required training MMPD should continue to emphasize the escalation in less use of deadly force by officers. Training should be reviewed annually, including a regularly review of um, nationally national best practices and resources needed to improve trainings and the resources needed to decrease the potential for use of force techniques. Continued training, repetitive Practice and improved resources are imperative for MMPD to maintain a continued focus on the improved, uh, excuse me, on the on the appropriate use of adoptive force. Continue, continue. Any thoughts, questions, or comments here? Madam Chair, this this was a. Uh, the perception of our our group with uh, wanting to again emphasize de-escalation. I know we've covered that in other areas. We wanted to make sure that we covered that uh, because we felt at the end of the day that excessive use of force, uh, what we learned and what we've read seems to be uh, seems to occur from lack of training whether it's training received up front or continued training over the years uh, or where perhaps older officers fell back to old habits. Um, so that was the basis of this recommendation, Madam Chair. Absolutely, yeah, it mirrors very strongly what training committee uh, came up with as well. And strong agreement, I believe um, we've had conversation here. Any disagreements here or it sounds like we're in agreement here? Uh, we might have consensus here on recommendation four. Okay, and we'll move to recommendation five. Speaks to the improvement of the appropriate response to mental health calls and an increased partnership with mental health co-op and the adoption of a policy and practices that will improve response to mental health issues. It also uh, speaks to addressing the excited delir delirium and consider deleting this from MMPD policies since the standard for use of force should focus on self-defense and defense of others rather, rather than officers understanding of a controversial definition. Excited delirium is not recognized by the American Psychiatric Association or the American Medi Medical Association. Uh, we've certainly spoken about this before. I'm going to open this up for um, uh, additional dialogue here. Or right, do we have consensus on this or any additional revisions uh, or thoughts on recommendation five? Madam Chair, I, I believe we covered this extensively um, in our, Ms. Lucas especially had some great ideas and, and was sharing important information about trying to create the partnership that we are we would like the police department to have. 
Um, this again was something that we felt needed to be mentioned. Um, and it's, it's a little broad in, in nature and it's not really a fix, but it's, it's an observation. It's a, important observations we wanted to make sure we pointed out. Absolutely, thank you. I, I wanna, uh, I think this is important, especially the, the first line, well, all of this is important, but this emphasis on the improved uh, response to mental health cause and increased partnership with mental health co-op. Um, and, and having, I haven't had the opportunity to listen into all the other subcommittees Di uh, conversation on this particular issue, but Mr. Button, I've got you on the call here. Um, with just want to be very clear when other committees have discussed this, are they in line and in agreement on the importance of having um, this either co response or, or quite frankly, perhaps even the cahoots model of ensuring that mental health is centered in the approach and and not leaning heavily on law enforcement presence as it relates to mental health uh, responses? Uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, communities have spent a lot of time looking into this, and Judge Blackburn uh, and Ms. Lucas had a good conversation yesterday where they exchanged some information. I think there is a consensus among the, among the commission members that moving in the direction of a co-response model is the way to go. And okay. again, communities has, has spent lots of time working on this issue. Okay, I'm sorry, Ms. Lucas. I'm sorry. I know you were in the meeting to yesterday too. I'm, I, I didn't get a chance, Ms. Lucas. Anything else you would share on that too? Yes, um, Madam Chair, please, um, Mr. Button. That was not my understanding. So I think I am mistaken. I, I was asking a question of Judge Blackburn and Ms. Roberson, who were the community's chair and vice chair about how and why they arrived on their recommendation of a CIT model, um, which I don't know if everybody remembers from the presentation from Dr. Valier of the MNCO, the mental health crisis response kind of occurs on a continuum. Uh, if you remember on one end is the crisis intervention um, team model, which is also referred to as the Memphis model, which is officers themselves get 40 hours of training um, and then are kind of specifically assigned. That is not what um, most of the community members are supporting. I think that, and I have absolutely no data to suggest what the breakdown is percentage wise, but that most people in the community are either supporting, like you said, Ms. Davis, the cahoots model or a co-response model where it's um, someone like the mental health co-op and we had Ms. Brock to come and talk to us where it's a partnership. <laughs> you know, between the department and the community. My understanding of the recommendation being made by the community's committee is that it is the CIT model uh, itself, which it does not involve mental health professionals and does not involve community members. It only involves training uh, police officers. If I am incorrect about that, please correct me, but that was my understanding of what that recommendation coming out of communities was. I would never want to misrepresent your conversation, Amanda. So please forgive me if I did that. Um, and I, you know, let me just make two points. So one is the question of what committee should be focused on making recommendations about people with mental illnesses is clearly the community's committee. They've done a great deal of work. Um, Dia, I know you spent more time shepherding that process, um, and I, I. Uh, would you like to uh, take a shot at characterizing their recommendations here? Delighted to do so. So, um, you know, as John mentioned in the mission document for the commission, the communities committee was charged with reviewing policies as they relate to vulnerable populations, which included youth, homeless and individuals presenting with mental health crises. There has been quite a bit of work um, done by Metro Nashville on approaches to mental health crises. Um, it started probably around 2016 on this issue. Um, and um, in 2018 was the creation of the um, Mayor's Behavioral Health and Wellness Advisory Council, 
which um, Judge Blackburn actually presented to on October 1. There's a recording of her presentation about the Communities Committee inviting um, you know, a full recommendation on what that council would be really supportive of. Um, that council is comprised of behavioral health um, entities uh, and individuals who intersect with, um, you know, in the arena of behavioral health services. There are 14 members of that council. That council includes um, Judge Sheila Calloway. It includes Katina Beard from Matthew Walker. It includes um, Vanderbilt Psychiatric Hospital, it includes Centerstone Mental Health Co-op, retired Judge Dan Eisenstein. So it's it's many of the leading lights in behavioral health services um, in Metro Nashville. Their position is that Nashville needs a co-response model. Um, the model that mental health co-op co currently uses is a partnership model. Um, there's been a strong investment in really evolving that model further. I think with a leadership change, we have that opportunity. So the principle, the central principle that we all agree upon and what I understand, you know, is, is present in this discussion is co-response. Um, so that has been reaffirmed um, on multiple occasions. Um, so I just wanna reassure the committee that everybody is invested in a co-response model. Thank you very much. That's uh, very helpful. Um, Ms. Lucas, any uh, other questions or anyone else here on this topic? Yeah, if we could just clarify because that, that's what I heard Ms. Cirillo say yesterday. Um, is just two things, first of all. First, I'd like to respond to Mr. what Mr. Bunton said. I completely hear what you're saying, and I honor the fact that um, Communities has worked hard on this issue. However, through the, you know, one of the things I said yesterday is about listening to people and listening to the community, as well as listening to the department. And it has been made clear to us that the department teaches that police presence is the first step on the continuum of the use of force. Police presence, police interfacing with a um, community member in an official capacity is a step on the use of force continuum. So that's why I would make the argument that it is actually policy um, related to talk about what kind of response, but to be as in, I didn't, actually get finished that conversation with Judge Blackburn yesterday, um, I think for time, but everybody's recommending some degree of co-response model or community model, but that's not what's being recommended by communities. Um, what I understood communities is recommending is the CIT model, which doesn't involve any co-response. It, it, other than what might exist now in terms of the use of the crisis treatment center, which as we've received information is not being utilized to the extent that it could be. So I'm just um, confused as to why, like the um, has just got through saying, co-response, 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 but then the model that's being recommended by communities is not co-response, it is the CIT model, which is not co-response. So I'm just confused as to, or maybe I'm, not understanding something, and I apologize if that's the case. That's always a possibility that I'm missing something. Madam Chair, Ms. Lucas, what, what uh, occurs to me is that we have a unique position on our committee. That we see what, what the training is, and we've heard from the officers what, what what's being taught and that they recognize that they need assistance um, a co-response. I would never begin to question Judge Eisenstein or, or, or that committee. They're coming more from a mental health standpoint. And what it sounds like to me is we're coming from a police policy standpoint and what we would like, what we think the, the MNPD would like to uh, how they would like it handled and what our recommendation is for the police. 
And and that may be why, Miss Lucas, th there's two different lenses people are looking through here. Uh, Judge Blackburn, I think, and her group may be looking through the lens of, of the individual. We are looking through the lens of the police department when they roll up on this uh, a mental health situation and they want help. Does that make sense? It does. And as a matter of fact, I would argue that the police officers that we've heard from them would say that they're not um, equipped to um, respond to these mental health crises that charging these individual, I mean, technically speaking, there are criminal trespassing charges or disorderly conduct charges, but generally speaking, it's not a law enforcement issue. It's a mental health issue. And we're taking our officers, we're continuing to expect them to do more and more for our communities and not giving them those tools. 40 hours of training, which is what the CIT model is, which I believe is then eight hours each year in in-service training is insufficient for dealing with mental health crises. And so yet again, we're talking about a model that does not resource our officers. It does not resolve their issues about transporting people and having to supervise patients. I believe an officer told us a story of having to go to Chattanooga with a um, patient because that's where the bed was for them. It still deprives them of the resources that they need. It doesn't provide them with the training that they need. And it does not reflect, and I would argue, and I agree with you entirely, Mr. Robinson, about the lenses through which we're looking at this situation, is we're trying to rebuild trust between the department and the community. And the community has spoken, they have spoken very clearly, and they continue to be ignored by a lot of the people who are in decision-making um, positions. As Ms. Cirillo just got through saying, there's a lot of really strong, I believe uh, Judge Blackburn referred to them as heavy hitters who have set a co-response model. You know, these are the folks, you know, Judge Calloway. Uh, I remember when Judge Eisenstein started the mental health court, that's something we had been pushing for for a long time. And they did tremendous work. And these folks are saying co-response model. All these other things that um, we've been researching with NOAA, we've been working on these models and crisis intervention models for years. Everybody's saying either co-response or cahoots, co-response or cahoots. I don't know how we can support a recommendation for a CIT model um, given what we know. And I just feel like it's important that to say that we may feel and maybe the rest of the committee does not agree and I, I'm happy to hear what other people have to say, but I would just make the argument that it is a step on the use of force continuum and therefore it is legitimately a policy issue in that if we want to make a recommendation of a co-response or a cahoots model, I still think that's within our purview. I don't know so, if I've made that argument so, persuasively enough, but that's my position. Vice Chair Lucas, thank you. I I'm just like to make I'm this point, Amanda. We've talked about this. Mr. Button, Mr. Yeah. Button just one moment. I, I just, and I'm, I'm happy to give you space to respond here. I just want to be clear about how we're going to move forward here, and we can certainly um, give a response here. We can um, give you space and time to respond here, but then um, I do have a question here, and then after this, I'm going to move to recommendation six. I want to make sure that we stay on point here, but feel free, Mr. Button. Go right ahead. It's a simple point. I mean, I think very simply that uh, we need to respect communities lead role on this issue. They've invested a great deal of time on it. And we've always been clear about that. And I think it would be appropriate for to respect the work they've done. Okay, uh, Ms. Brennan, uh, thank you. And the question, uh, and I appreciate you unmuting here. My, my question is just this. So we We've been uh, working within these subcommittees. The pre preliminary recommendations came out over a month ago. Then these were a part of these. They were part of them then. They were part of it. You know, and when we met in person here, when we go into when we submit these, I mean, even when we submitted these a couple of weeks ago, this was a part of it. Um, when they go to you all, uh, and they're already with you already. And this, let's say, recommendation five. We have consensus here. We agree as a committee, uh, policy committee, that this is important. We're we're prepared to move forward to recommendation six. It is is it the opinion of of um, of your body, your, or let's say Mayor Dean and Mr. Mr. Lewis, because they are the chairs here, so they should be making this final decision. 
that they would not include this recommendation because they d have determined that this is something that the communities um, um, should uh, is more properly uh, fit to decide. And that, uh, and if that's the case, should we assume that there should be nothing in that final report uh, related to racial disparities um, that um, any other committee has spoken to that runs counter anywhere near uh, something that policy uh, that we've spoken to? Uh, should we be very comfortable that nothing has run afoul to that? Because I don't believe I've seen any, you know, any any of the other recommendations. I just want to be clear about that. Ashley, I had just a quick point, if I could. This is me. Okay. Well, can I just um, get an answer? Can I get an answer? I want to get a button first. Yeah. Um, yes, Ashley. So, uh, of course, no other committee should be making recommendations which are clearly and directly in the policy committee's wheelhouse. And oh. I am not aware that any committee has done that. And this was an issue that was discussed uh, yesterday when Mayor Dean and Mr. Lewis were present. Okay, got it. Okay, and and okay, and I'll come back to if need be, Miss Bilal. Yeah, I just wanted to add in there. I look back on my notes when we were discussing this, and would it be a conflict? Um, Mr. Button, if we just made the recommendations without conflicting with communities that um, at least Mayor Dean, at least that they got to also look and consider the co-response model and the cahoots model, because really all three of these are very different. And we've talked so much about the importance of a multidisciplinary team and um, aiding the police and that team being part of the community, being part of mental health, being part of um, peer review. We talked about a lot of different options and that CIT model, the Memphis model is really police only that are trained in mental health. And that's very different from co-response. It's a plain police, a plain close police officer and mental health and the cohoots, which is mental health first responder or peer responder. So, they're very different and I would like, I don't know what's going to be final, but I would like for at least the co-chairs to maybe consider all three of these since it sounds like we haven't all come out on the same end. The only thing I have in my notes about the CAHOOTS model is that it really is just in states that expanded Medicare and of course um, Medicaid and we haven't done that. so. I, even if we recommended it, I don't know if we could do that because we're not there. I mean, that's that would be the only thing. But I just wanted to kind of point that out from my notes because these are three very different models. And the CIT model is not a community model. It is not a multidisciplinary model. It's none of those things. Um, and that really isn't what I know we in policy talked about. We wanted to diversify the teams. So, co-response is, yeah, is to answer questions. Yeah, so co-response is at the heart of the recommendation of the communities committee. And this is an issue that is in their purview and that they have spent a great deal of time looking at. Okay, certainly. <laughs> Do we know, Madam Chair or John, uh, whether or not the that committee considered or considered uh, issues that the police department or the police officers incur when they show up to a call with with a mental health issue? I don't know. That Absolutely. Do. They heard they heard subject matter expert from mental health co-op uh, on more than one occasion where that was discussed in great detail. Okay. Okay. Let, let me go to Mr. Delgado and, and just in time too, since we look we, at this point, both of those committees have submitted their final uh, report and, and we're near the end where we're going to submit our hours. We can't change what they've uh, submitted. They submitted their votes and made it um, 
final and we're not looking to to change it so we're just um prepared to look at the final report let me go to mr delgado and then we'll move to recommendation six mr delgado thank you, thank you. Uh, lastly i'm sorry i want to apologize first that i couldn't attend on monday i just oh, no, couldn't sir. do it with my business but my question is i'm 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 a little uh i was kind of playing a little catch-up because I tried to look through the minutes to try to find out what happened on Monday and I couldn't get anything on the um, the Google Doc. But mm -hmm. I'm seeing that some of the things that we talked about last week have been changed. And I don't want to, on Monday, did everybody go back to the beginning and then just kind of rewrite everything? Because I feel like some of the things that we talked about last week are missing from this document that I received today. No, we, we picked up exactly where we left off. Um... At the so let me back up. So today's the fifth. The last time we met was the 29th, I believe. Right. Uh, uh -huh. Excuse me. The last official Thursday meeting was the 29th. And then we met again on the Monday. And the last time we met on that Thursday, I believe we ended. Um, keep me honest here, folks. I think we ended at the end of training, I believe. And then we yep. picked up on Monday at accreditation. That's where we picked up. Okay. And that's and we went straight from accreditation. I believe we got through accreditation discipline and a little bit of data. Data of one and the two, two things that stood out to me was and I and again I really apologize because I know we're trying to get through this and I don't want to take it back, but I have to speak uh, on racial disparities on number two. I thought it wasn't going to be only limited to uh, a violent offense for one. And then I thought we talked about uh, body cams being uh, something that we would recommend that the officers would wear if the uh, warrant was issued. And I don't see any of that in here. And then one of my recommendations on the physical portion, I'm not worrying about because I see it coming up in this next recommendation here. Mm -hmm. But I'm just concern so about tell me about your second one there mr delgado i can't I, I that was a lot for me but tell me about the second one what was the second one i, I can follow you so racial disparities on recommendation two i thought there was a few committee members that spoke up that we wanted to make sure that uh warrants that were issued that we would request that officers have to wear a body cam and i thought that we weren't limiting the no knock warrant to only violent offenses because we talked about the potential for uh evidence to be lost we, and so we, we gave an um, example if I can, say. can someone refresh my memory on that i think we we um yeah we spent a, a, a great time i don't want to rehash that and then I yeah, apologize. Um, no 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 it's okay i don't i, I don't want to confuse you either on that because we uh, it's probably help more helpful for you to see the recording on that. Is that recording available um, quite yet, uh, yet, Ms. Cirillo, by yet, or Ms. Gilchrist, by chance, do you know? Yeah, because I tried to go into that document today to save this time now, and there was no updated okay. information from our last meeting. That's okay. Is the Monday um, um, meeting available yet? Ashley, do you remember who hosted the Monday meeting? Stephanie Judd, I believe. Okay, I will email her now to see if there is um, access to that meeting. Okay, mm -hmm. if we, yeah, Thank that you. would be great. And and Mr. Delgado, if you could um, review that one, that that will do for, uh, really. It'll be really helpful if you could see that. It'll be great. It's only ninety minutes long, but it, you'll see exactly kind of the thought process there and the dialogue there. Is that helpful, Ashley? Yeah. I'm so sorry. Uh, I jumped in. You were asking Mr. Delgado a question. No, go I was ahead. just going to make a recommendation that we go ahead and um, eliminate recommendation five uh, because we already uh, addressed excited delirium earlier in our recommendations. And um, given what I've heard Mr. Button say, that um, mental health crisis response is something that um, communities needs to address. Is just go ahead and um, delete recommendation five unless anybody has any objection to that and move on to number six. I'd like to know if the committee is comfortable with that. Uh, 
I hear the point uh, that Ms. Lucas is making. I, I definitely think we can just take away the, the pieces about excited delirium because that was addressed elsewhere very well. Um, but I do still think it's policy around the use of force recommendations that we were tasked to, to make that mm -hmm. um, we leave at least the first part in there that and I think our strongest recommendation is that there must be a policy. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I'm not, I'm not comfortable taking that part out. Yeah. This is me, Rapalol. I agree. Yeah, I would, I would just say we, I don't take anything away from what communities has expended time on. We, we spent a considerable amount of time ourselves in our own committee meetings. Um, and, and I know they spent Thursdays or Wednesdays in time. We spent Thursdays time as well. If, if Ms. Brock came and spoke before us and presented for purpose and reason as well, I say we keep it. And one of the most also. I'm sorry. One of the most important things I remember Ms. Brock saying, uh, I directly asked her what, what could we as this committee making recommendations do to best support their work. And she said, the most important thing is to recommend that a policy be adopted. And that's, I just don't think we can back away from that to the policy committee. Thank you, Ms. Chairman Davis, I have just a, a quick question. So we know the other two committees finalized. Our document's going to be finalized. Do the co chairs then review all three and come up with a master document? Or all three of these, is that it? And and it's signed, sealed, and delivered. My understanding is that we vote. Um, I intend to we we're, we're going to take this uh tonight, finalize this tonight. Um, after we get to through this last portion here, you all will get a clean copy of this by tomorrow morning. You'll have until Monday close of business. So we have all weekend and then Monday close of business to send that you approve and you're voting yay to um this. We, as long as we have a majority vote, um, then this will be approved and we'll send that final document, that approved document um, uh, to Ms. Cirillo, Button and Brown. Uh, and then that document, I will assume, will get sent to Mr. Uh, to Mayor Dean and Mr. Lewis. And then from there, I believe that Mr. Uh, Lewis and Mayor Dean, they take, uh, they bring those together, um, that, that final report. Ms. Uh, Lucas uh, and or Ms. Cirillo, Mr. Button, am I confused or missing any important steps from there? My understanding from yesterday is that Ms. Cirillo is working on, um, oh, there she is. Okay. I'll let her answer. <laughs> yes, I'd say that's that is, that is accurate, Ashley. So we have already started working with uh, Mr. Lewis and Mayor Dean on um, putting the recommendations into the format uh, laid out by D at the beginning of the process. And um, yesterday at the meeting, we sort of we shared and sort of an outline of what the structure would look like with the committee chairs and co-chairs. Um, so that work is already starting up, but the process that you outlined is is accurate. So, if there is conflict will, between any of the three reports, that will be um, ironed out at that time, so that there is a consistent document that is ultimately presented yep. to the mayor. Yes, they will. They will have the opportunity to do that. Yeah, and if I may just jump, jump in, um, Ms. Bilal, just to let you know, yesterday in the chair's meeting, we did go over two areas and there's no conflict actually. Um, there's there's a lot of overlap and a lot of commonality. Um, so the two areas that we talked about was one on discipline, uh, which your committee carries a recommendation on discipline as did workforce. And interestingly, they said you guys are saying the same thing that discipline is a morale issue. Um, so we just did a, um, I just received um, confirmation from the workforce chair about the language and shared her confirmation with um, uh, Ms. Davis and Ms. Lucas. Um, so what we're really looking at is uh, despite the fact that we have three separate committees with three separate charges, where we see overlap 
is uh, typically the committees are in agreement. So we have not seen any conflict. So would it be wrong for us to mention the co-response model is something to consider? So that when the co-chairs look at this, that's also something they consider as they look at the community report for the CIT model? Ms. Bilal, co-response is in the recommendation. In, in communities? Yes. Okay, so it is cohort is um, co cahoots also? Co-response is in the recommendation. Okay, so that's that's the recommendation coming out of the communities committee. And so they deliberated on that. That was their charge. Okay. Any other questions or comments here um, before we move forward? Okay, we'll take recommendation six. Recommendation six speaks to the uh, MDD adopting the official policy related to all recruits and active recruits, excuse me, active officers, emotional, mental, and psychological well being and physical fitness for the job. This official policy should be recorded in the manual, other written documents regularly re reviewed and updated as needed. What questions to be answered and included? When it's required to meet with an MMPD dedicated therapist? What warrants this these visits and how can policy address it, address mental me, mental emotional psychological well being of officers? Um, any uh, any uh, decision opinion on recommendation six, or do we have consensus here? Make sure you guys can see. Okay, sounds like we're good on recommendation six. I'll move us to a data committee. Uh, speak up, and, and if I cut anyone off, please feel, feel free to return the favor and cut me off. Sorry about that. Um, I heard a little bit of feedback. I want to offer um, just an awareness here on the structure of the data committee uh, layout of, of the recommendations. Uh, Ms. Bilal, thank you again for your um, your service to the committee on this one. I restructured this language a little bit prior to submitting it to Ms. Arillo, uh in the um, in the final submission. It's kind of like I put final pending approval by the committee because I wanted to uh, make sure that it read a little bit cleaner uh, for the recommendations that use similar language. So in recommendation one, it speaks to um, revising policies to eliminate use of children and neighbors as interpreters. The department should implement procedures to ensure use of neutral, competent interpreters. Just wanna remind people, um, our, all of us here collectively, this was uh, after a series of meetings, I believe they met every Wednesday for a series of weeks. Um, so some of these recommendations will seem like, you know, how do we tie this back to kind of our general overall part purpose? Some of them will land very cleanly and neatly in our, our overall purpose, some not so much. Um, what I'd like for us to do if we can is tie as many as we can back to a um, an already established uh, larger topic. So if we can tie it back to training, accreditation, discipline, data, excessive force, instead of it sitting in its own large uh, larger topic, um, just so that it it fits in something we've already uh, established. Um, or if we look at, for instance, in recommendation one, if we agree that we want to keep it, that's fine or if we believe that perhaps this is something that one of the other committees likely have already covered, such as communities, um, and um, you know, it just comes to mind based on what they likely have covered, then perhaps we choose not to include it. So with that in mind, let me just uh, go on mute here and ask thoughts on recommendation one. I think it could possibly fall under discipline, just looking over some of the discipline recommendations. 
Is it in the community's report? If it is, then we don't need to duplicate it, I guess. Good question. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, Mr. Rello and or Mr. Button, uh, is it's, this something that- It's really currently not, um, but it, it certainly could go in there if you feel that this is not in alignment with your organizing structure. Okay. So in order to do that, what we need to add to our current discipline, I guess, um, category, is that, what would be the best way to do that cleanly? Madam Chair, I'm a little confused about how eliminating the use of children or neighbors as interpreters would, would line up under discipline. I think we're, well, for our problem under discipline, we spoke a lot about morale. Um, I, I was reviewing, when I think about the morale piece, I find it hard on that one. Um, Mr. Delgado, did, what did you have in mind when you thought about morale? Yeah, I automatically thought about the community's space um, when I thought about this one, but but let, let me know what you think about Mr. Delgado. I think I was just in skimming over some of the, the um, recommendations under um, discipline, mm -hmm. like, you know, form 108 should be mandatory dis despite injury or soft. That seems like a, like a task. Uh, and I feel like this could, I, I think just again, from my skimming over, I thought that it could fit under there, but you know, I'm fine with, you know, whether we move it to training or whatever, I was just trying to find a location where it might be more appropriate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Mr. I, Mr. I do agree with you. I think uh, maybe, Putting it under another uh, um, uh, committee, rather, or a section, I think would be a good option. Go ahead. It cut off there. Ms. Davis, I was just going to recommend the same thing. Uh, I think it's a great fit under training, maybe training more so than discipline. Hmm. So I think if officers are trained in the appropriate use of interpreters, then we would limit the. Um, opportunities for for them to tap into children and neighbors as interpreters okay. and i will say that the way that this came forward in data was really associated with culture and that when there's a call and a neighbor calls um for their own safety and then the police pull the neighbors in and get them involved it often puts them in an uncomfortable situation within their own communities mm -hmm. and so this was really you know a community complaint but um you know we included it just as something for us to look at if we wanted to keep it or not keep it but that that is how it came to be okay. that's the no, background that's to it okay. no that's helpful okay um okay any other thoughts here on recommendation one before we move to two okay uh recommendation two is has uh four subsections here um you can really just ignore three here it's in a weird space here uh recommendation two asks to evaluate the cost and effectiveness of uh, four different pieces here um one is mmpd's incident decision making model which considers the clear policy using um more specific techniques including chart or pyramid of de-escalation techniques that are prerequisites to use of force um, the second one is VDI, which, which is also de-escalation techniques, which considers whether there are alternatives to de-escalation techniques that have proven effective in peer city police departments, and enhance policies regarding agency referrals regarding mental health. The third is existing community affairs activities and whether those resources could be better deployed in community policing. And the fourth is collaboration with research universities to measure effectiveness of police policies and procedures in achieving department goals, particularly with uh, respect to community engagement and satisfaction. All of this is under recommendation two and a request to evaluate the cost and effectiveness of these four um, components. Um, oh my God. Jerk off bullshit. So the question here is uh, 
uh, whether or not uh, we agree that we would uh, recommend these four um, approaches to um, uh, cost and effectiveness. And um, if so, would this, uh, my recommendation is, is kind of to me, maybe perhaps would also, I mean, in a way, I guess it could very well fall in the training space too, but perhaps this could be a data. I, I guess it could also be data. I welcome thoughts on this too, though, from the committee. I wonder what my colleagues think on this. I would think that uh, one and two could also go under training. Um, I don't. I don't think the other two apply, but I do think the first and second could certainly go under training. Okay, gotcha. thank you. What do we think about? Okay. We, we, what do we think about um, the, the third one? We, we've kind of spoken to the third one already. Is there a need to put that one in there? It, it kind of a more generalized way to say the 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 more the way something we said in a more specific way earlier. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Specific way. Or do, or do you think it's unique still? If it, if we think it's not, totally fine with me too. Madam Chair, I don't think we uh, or some of us know exactly what the community committee is is including. Um, it, you know, it, it it's a good point. It's just it's it's a it's a good point. Um, not that it, it's it's a good observation. Uh, whether you just leave it right there. Um, perhaps another committee has the same observation, but it, but it's a good observation by this group, uh, whatever we decide to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I don't see that it uh, takes anything away from any other committee if, if we just leave it. Yeah. Point. Yeah, I just, I take your point there too, Ms. Bo. I wonder, I would love to hear from you. I just think it's it's so generalized here. It doesn't offer much guidance. You know, all of our other recommendations are much more specific here. I just, it's kind of my, it, it just, I just, I would rather take it out because it doesn't offer enough the bones, if that makes sense. Sure, I think that that would be fine. I think it was just again another piece of the culture um, and what is going on now. How um, how police are attempting to engage in the community and some of the things that they're doing. Some of the things are expensive. Some are you know just to really kind of look at them and see when you're doing fairs and you know those things are you getting the result that you want from a culture standpoint in the community um or or should you be looking at some other things as well so i think it was just kind of inviting them to evaluate the effectiveness of their current um abilities to improve the culture you know between them and the community okay Okay. Community activities are kind of what they're doing now. Oh, okay. I think. So, but I mean, it, it doesn't matter to me. This was just something that came out of the committee, so I put it in there because it was part of it. But it doesn't. I don't feel one way or the other. Okay. And if, um, if, it, if it's in communities, then that's fine. But it really is kind of a culture piece. Okay. Thank you. Madam, Madam Chair, this yeah. is uh, Eric. Uh, can, can you, can you uh, mute the uh, caller that's on the line, please? What? 
We're still hearing a lot of uh, profanity from the back, and we just want to go ahead and mute them. Okay. They're hearing a lot of profanity on the side. I wonder who's saying that. What are you doing? Who told you? No, oh, yeah. What's going on? Yeah, Madam Chair, I think um, Mr. Woods is on mute, but that may be him speaking. So there may be a problem with his. No, mute. it's not. It's not me. Oh, okay. <laughs> so whoever the call-in user is, um, you're unless you unmute mute yourself, we can still hear your background. I think that's. Okay, if they're not on mute and this continues, can you just go ahead and expel them so that we don't no longer hear the profanity, please? Yes, I can. Thank you. Sorry about that, Madam Chair. Oh, thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so um, thanks for the dialogue here. Um, okay, so in, in, in the expediency here, we're going to, um, before I think, thank you, Mr. Bilal here. We're going to, Move forward here. The so we have we have two pieces here. There's the in recommendation three. It talks about the it, it says add community engagement policing to training requirements. I just I'd love to. I don't. I'm not. I don't usually skip around, but I just want to be clear here. Are we comfortable with agreeing here that we we've, we've already spoken to community engagement? Um, um, before before here but and I'm, I'm asking this because I'm, I'm 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 comfortable with deleting this here but i don't hear anyone speaking out that they are um, not comfortable with this space uh with deleting this here i think the only difference is the first one is saying evaluate the cost and effectiveness of it yeah. meaning as you're working with culture is it worth the money is it working is it worth the cost the second one is saying you need to do some kind of engagement. You know, there needs to be engagement. So I think those are the differences. Um, okay. So, and, and if we we're taking this out, so let's say, all right, let's, let me take this this part here out. Um, the, um, and I'm actually, I'm just gonna, for now, I'm gonna do is, uh, Wanna... And and actually that that last one I'm not sure that was that is with the research universities. Uh -huh. I I think that was a free that was a freestanding recommendation. It really wasn't associated with cost and effectiveness because really um, what was behind that is that there are cities like Chicago that had um, procedural justice programs. And in those, and we had talked about how we have so many universities right here in Davidson County that could get big federal grants to actually make us better at doing this than we are already. And if they're setting um, reduced force, you know, um, changes in police attitudes, collaborating with um, researchers and doing randomized controlled trials within a university setting, bringing in psychologists to work with police. This is all stuff that happened in Chicago through a federal grant. So really what this is saying is that we could collaborate with universities and do the same thing, get a lot more bang for our buck, with sure. you know, it's dollars that go already to those universities and us piggybacking on top of those. So Mr. So Law, you're saying that we I'm sorry, go right ahead. Now, that's just what that, I mean for people to understand what that is. That's what that component was behind. And we already know that Vanderbilt had such a grant and they did it with Louisville instead of with us. So are we saying keep this here or we want to put it somewhere else? What What do you mean by freestanding? Are you saying you, you want to bring this out from under this and have it as its own? Well, number two is just about evaluating cost and effectiveness, where this is actually saying, um, 
I mean, I guess it could go under cost in that if we, you know, piggyback with a federal grant with the university, I guess it helps the cost. I mean, I guess it could go under cost. I mean, that. How would you want it to read? That's that. How I'm fine with how it reads. I just don't know if it goes under evaluating cost and effectiveness of. It doesn't make sense to me to fall there. It almost seems like it needs to just be, you know, another recommendation that says make efforts to collaborate with research universities to measure the effectiveness of. So you wanted to say make efforts to measure the effectiveness of collaborating is that what you're saying no, no. Make, make efforts to collaborate with with um research universities to measure the effectiveness of policies and, and procedures in achieving department goals particularly with respect to community engagement okay, hold on. slow up slow up I'm, I'm 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 typing with you I'm, I'm make typing. efforts to collaborate with research universities and then what was that I think the rest is fine, just right as here? is. Okay, got it. Yeah. And you want that to be you mean that its own um its own um recommendation, right? Yes. Perfect. Got it. Okay. And where and this would be under which category? Would this be training? Is this I think yeah, I think I think it would be training because I mean, the current models that are out there working within universities are all associated with reducing force okay. and changing police attitudes. Got it. Okay, that works. All right. Any additional thoughts here? This would be, this is, I'm going to call this recommendation 2.5 here. Um, in this space, we'd be deleting this one. We've agreed. We're in agreement on this. We're coming out of this um, recommendation three. Recommendation three says add community engagement policing to training requirements. Are we in agreement that this, uh, do we feel that this is necessary to state in this way? Um, one, based on our focused uh, approach and two, based on all the things that we've already said, do we need to say this here um, or have we already said it in other ways? Madam Chair, I, I think that we have um, made, I, I think we've addressed what's in recommendation five, probably more specifically in other places. And I think it's, um, I don't think we need recommendation five. Just my thought. So wait, I'm I'm asking about recommendation three here. Are you? At, uh, what about recommendation three right now? Just add community engagement, policing, and training requirements. Do we think we need that? Uh, based on I, I'm just I'm wondering if this is just uh, a bit superfluous right now, based on the fact that we've been, we've gone we, we this uh, pretty I think extensively. We've covered this already. I think. I would so the same thing. I would make the same statement about recommendation three. I think it's probably uh, addressed more, uh, more specifically in other places in our project. Okay, thank you. Anyone else on recommendation three for now? Mr. Delgado, was it you? Yes, yeah, sorry. I, I, I was recommending to have it removed. I feel like it's already covered in the training. Okay. Anyone feel? We'll remove recommendation three. Recommendation four says add training and policies related to encounters with certain vulnerable populations. I think we are in agreement yes. that uh, based on the communities, uh, communities, um, uh, uh, the communities committee stated purpose there's no need for us to state that as they've been centrally focused on that effort are we in agreement there yeah um 
recommendation five, Mr. Robinson saying that uh, Mr. Robinson, if I'm stating this correctly. You were saying that you feel we've um, touched on this in quite extensively already. Is that what you were saying about recommendation five? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And and um, specifically, it sounds like you were saying that because of that, that there was no need to that essentially we could delete. Uh, um, recommendation five altogether. Is that what you were saying? Yes, ma'am. Anyone else feel differently? I just wanted to make sure where we had previously used it that the choke holes and vascular restraints were included. That language is it in the where we previously mentioned it? Those two examples. I would like those examples to stay in there. In, in which. Uh, in uh, in the earlier sections, is that is that what you were saying, or you were saying you've already you've already mentioned that there needs to be consistency with the manual and department policies, and that they're aligned. We've already said that. I just wanted to make sure that we use as an example. Mm -hmm. I will make sure this. I just we can delete this, but just make sure that the choke holds and vascular restraints where we previously talked about it. I'll make sure that that's in there. Yep. Anything else on recommendation five? And I only say that they asked about it. I'm sorry. I said I only say that because when we visited, we asked about choke holes, and that was something that was mentioned that they would like to bring back, and so. Yeah. I would not want that to be brought back. So I would like them to have an example that it's something we want brought back. Of course, you no, know, I remember we spoke about that before. Okay. Anything else on recommendation five? Okay. And uh, last but not least, recommendation six. Implement policies and tools for greater public Transparency on use of force incidents, including demographic, geographic, and other identifying information. Any thoughts on recommendation six? Madam Chair, it, it, um, I guess it's it's a. a pretty broad recommendation as far as implementing policies and tools for greater trans greater public transparency it, it, would that I, I guess try to um, cut to the core a little more of it is is that like I think there's an interactive map on the Metro police website that you can see what all uh, crimes have been committed in your neighborhood would that is, is this the same type of recommendation where i guess I, i'm a little confused or would like more of uh, some clarification on exactly I, I think everybody's for greater public transparency but i guess um uh i, I feel like we need to be a little more clear with what we want to happen. How well, I'm to say happen. This was born out of the fact that often in the data committee, we had data on force on use of force incidences, but they didn't include demographic traffic and, uh, and data that helps us to understand if, um, certain populations were affected by it, I guess. In some instances we had it, but then in a lot of instances we didn't. And we felt like really when it comes to use of force, we really need to know these details about um, who it's being used against and, and recorded because it gives us a more effective way of evaluating if it's, you know, hitting certain populations. Mm -hmm. And maybe a recommendation for the form 108, the use of force form that they fill out to um, 
include or the specifics of the specific data from the form 108 as to yeah. graphics uh, graphics and other identifying information be provided to the community that might be a, a, a tool to get it done miss Bilal, if if you're if you like that recommendation i think that sounds great if it's not on the form I it. so i think that would be a great place to put it can uh can you say that again for me well we were just talking about using to actually make sure that um demographics um and geographic information is sex um you know male female um is it is on that form 108. okay so we're not talking about, we talk adding about this form, we can we can delete this and just say when we in the previous part we talked about the form and the form to include and that way for every use of force where they have to do the form it's going to already have that in there but I think also part of the issue is it maybe it's already on that form. I don't know if it is or not, but part of what we struggled with is that when we were pulling the numbers on things, not being able to say, oh, you know, there were 100 uses of force, you know, in this time period, where in Nashville did they happen? Were they in North Nashville, South Nashville? You know, we, we really wanted that information because it helps us figure out disparities and we didn't always have that in every situation I'm like oh well, we didn't get demographics that time we didn't get okay. this we didn't get you know whether it was male female you know and it was just frustrating with some of pulling some of the data and not being able to see those descriptions okay because it's hard to create policy when you don't know understood so are we changing anything in this recommendation I mean, I'm fine with deleting it if we want to put it on the form. I just hope that if it's in the form, it's still in a place that we can collect it and look at it. Um, no, no ma'am. I, I, I don't think we need to change it. I don't think we need to delete this in a hopeful wish that it will exist where else. We need to, it's why the recommendation needs to exist here because it, it, it doesn't exist currently. I just wanted to know if there's any a change in the, the language here um, to expand it anyway. That was my act. Okay, that, I that misunderstood. Was. I thought we'd already written something about the form. We'd already written a policy. We didn't, we haven't. Well, no, we have a form 108 form, but it really, and, and it was more earlier on, um, in to um, talking about the frequency of the form being filled out. Um, but this is more about implementing policies about greater transparency of the of the public getting this data. So, for instance, there is a use of force uh, a report, annual report that not even the COB got a, 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 uh, the report last year that nobody knew about until this commission came came to be, and we all got a copy of it at the start of this commission. That shouldn't have been. That should have been something that the entire Nashville community got a copy of in December of last year. So that this is a good recommendation because we all should, as residents, get a copy of that. So I think this recommendation is a great, a great recommendation. Oh, okay. Well, I was thinking so I was just trying to find a way to preserve components of it. But yeah, if if we can keep it, I think that would be fine. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments here on recommendation six? Okay. Okay. So let me just outline here briefly here for our next steps. I will um, tonight this up. Uh, I will implement everything we just agreed to, uh, starting with data recommendation three all the way to data committee recommendation six and send everyone a clean copy of our recommendations um of our final recommendations all you need to do is review it it will be in a pdf you need to review it and then respond that you approve um the document um in its final format 
uh, if you approve it. Um, and that vote is needed by Monday at 5 p.m. You will have it by tomorrow at 9 p.m. You may have it earlier than that. You might get it tonight, quite frankly, but you'll have all of this weekend to review it. I ask that you please hit reply all. Please hit reply all when you respond. Um, please, please, please. I will put that in bold. Please hit reply all so that by Chair Lucas gets your response as well. Um, all of the committee will be BCC'd, everyone but myself and Vice Chair Lucas will be BCC'd. So you will get that clean copy either tonight or tomorrow by 9 a.m. Central. Uh, I want to thank everyone for your time, um, your talents, your energy, your purpose here. Um, I've said it before, I said it last night, I wouldn't have wanted to be on any other committee. Um, this was the one for me. Um, Vice Chair Lucas, would you like to say anything else or anyone else for that matter here in this space and time and before we adjourn here? I just want to say thank you to everybody for giving so generously of your time for um, just the. Um, it, it was just such a heartening experience and such a wonderful experience for me to see everybody come together and to do the very best job that we can for our city. It is pretty obvious that we have some just incredible people here in Nashville. And I just wanted to take a moment to really um, recognize all the hard work of the Metro ITS folks. I don't want to forget anybody, but um, Ms. Gilchrist and Ms. Judd and, um, the folks from, I'm just going to call you Metro, uh, Mr. Brown and Mr. Button and Ms. Cirillo, who have kind of shepherded us through this process. Is just thank everybody so much for um, the thoughtfulness and the hard work and just the generosity, both of time, energy, and spirit that you've given to this project. As someone who's been working on this for years, it's just really warmed my heart to see so many of you um, take this. Um, so seriously and invest so much into it and it was just a wonderful experience and thank you all so much thank you anything else from the body here before we, uh, we uh, i want to just make a final request again that the video or uh for monday's meeting be made available as soon as possible because i feel like i can't uh in good faith give a vote on this if, if i don't have that information Okay. Absolutely. Yep. The email. Yeah, it yeah. is. It is. Um, it Ms. Gilchrist just sent it out and we just circulated it to Ms. Davis. Um, and so that will go out to the committee right away, but it's, it's in possession right now. Okay. Yep. I'll see. I will indeed. Thank y'all. And I just want to add it. I just want to add a thank you very briefly uh, on behalf of Mayor Cooper. He'll be reaching out directly, I'm sure, to thank you all as well. But um, the work that you've done is so appreciated. We're all excited about the work ahead. And this entire experience has just, has just been a really great one for me. I've learned so much from listening and interacting with all of you. And I really appreciate the relationships and look forward to you know, to them continuing. There's a lot of work to be done ahead, and I hope that you will all uh, not hesitate to reach out to me, um, you know, not just over the course of the coming weeks, but over the, the coming months and years. Um, please don't hesitate to call me with thoughts, questions, advice at any point. Thank you. I will. Thank you. We all got to figure out what to do with our Thursday nights now. Figure it out. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Take care, y'all. Bye bye. Thank y'all. Good night. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit Nashville.gov.